Hey everyone, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake and welcome to another Photoshop CC tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the clipping mask tool and how it can be used to go ahead and take multiple images and go ahead and do something like we've done here, which could be a photo collage or just anything you need to do. You can do this with other shapes, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to be using the rectangle tool primarily. So you don't need any special version of Photoshop to follow along. You can do this in any version of Photoshop, whether it be CS3, CS4, CS5, CS6, or even CC, which I'm using today. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see over here in the layers that I have three different rectangles. And I've colored them here just so you can see them and they're all the same shape and size. So individually, that's what we have. Now on top of each of these images, we have a different photo. And these photos haven't been cropped at all. If I move the photos, whatever is left in the actual area of the photo is going to move and is going to fit to the area of the clipping mask. That's how clipping works. So the areas of the rectangle are where the photograph is being clipped, and that can be extremely useful. If I were to right click here and hit release clipping mask, and I'd have to move this particular layer to the top, you can see that there's a lot more to this image. But if I move this rectangle under it, I right click to create the clipping mask, then it go ahead and it clips slash crops this image non-destructively like so. Now if I were to move just the rectangle, you can see that it's also clipping there as well. So that's one of the other things to keep in mind with the clipping mask. If you wanted to lock your image to the clipping mask, what you'd have to do is right click, select link layers, and then whenever you move one, the other will move also. So that's how you would do that. And if you want to unlink them, you unlink the layers. Now for many people, this is a lot better than cropping just depending on what you have to work with, or a lot better than using an actual mask. And there are several reasons for that. Uh, it just depends on the style of what you're trying to do and why you want to accomplish that. Again, this will work with other shapes besides just the rectangle tool. If I release clipping mask, and let's go ahead and create a custom shape. We'll just go ahead and use this heart. So we've made that, we'll place that below our image, and we'll select Create Clipping Mask. And you can see how that works. So again, this lends itself to some very interesting possibilities in terms of what you can do artistically and how you can utilize Clipping Mask. Now there are other ways you can use clipping mask. You can use that with color effects and I'll definitely do that in another tutorial. But this is to give you a basic understanding of how clipping mask work. Now if you make the layer below what you have clipped invisible, then the layer above will also become invisible. So that's important to note. So if we release the clipping mask again, that's back to normal. We can move this back over, create the clipping mask again, and we'll just move it and position it like so. When you want something to clip to a shape, you need to place it above that shape in the layer order. That's going to tell it what it's going to be clipping to. So again, this is some very basic stuff here. Again, clipping mask will work with smart objects, so you can definitely do that. It will work with vector shapes. Clipping mask work generally with anything. Uh, you can technically use clipping mask with uh, text. I convert to a smart object when I'm doing that or convert the uh, text to paths if they're finalized. So again, there's a lot of different ways that you can use this. This is just the most straightforward and basic way that clipping masks are used and just introduce you to the idea of it. I'll do some other tutorials that use advanced clipping mask on special effects at another point. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other Photoshop tutorial videos in my series. And as always, thanks for watching.